episode chauvinism hello welcome to another show of Shlavia Sulam hello Dr. Lightman hello father <laughs> yes I'm very excited to sit here with you you're a little bit under pressure here yes because of the cameras it's unusual I'm not used to it yes and I wanted to ask I wanted to talk to you about a topic that that's very important to a lot of women they turn to us through your blog through letters to you and I received a lot of questions that deal with the stance of the woman with feminism and I wanted to talk to you about it is that okay well usually it's not for the cameras but okay yes I wanted to ask you I'm a woman and a nickname for being a woman is being weak. Why is it so? It's truly so because obviously, evidently, a woman depends on the man. And it's both a physical, also a physiological and a mental dependence. In all of its forms, we see that a man could be on his own, he can get along on his own, even though he can't develop. But he can somehow get along. A woman, she needs a family, she wants kids, she wants to have a husband. She mentally depends on having someone next to her. A man is more needy of a woman as an accompanying force. And it's only in the humans, because we see in nature uh, bees, for example, or penguins, where the female goes to hunt. Sometimes there are examples that are opposite to the humans in yes, nature. Yes, that's true. So it's only in the human level where the female is dependent on the male? The truth is that the things in our world come after many corruptions and the descent from the spiritual world to our level. Whereas in spirituality, even when we're only starting to ascend from our degree to the spiritual when there is a vast difference between men and women, both with respect to their path, their participation, the correction, the form of correction, until they enter the spiritual world. And then they're equal? And then, when they're already dealing with the structure of the soul, the connection between them on the soul level, there they're equal. What, they have the same role in the same place? It's a different role, but obviously that they complete each other such that one cannot attain anything without the other. If I look at the wisdom of Kabbalah, I see that there is the Nukva, yes. which a lot of feminists would scream out and say that what the name and our role is this deficiency? The Nekev in Hebrew meaning a void means deficiency. A deficiency is a vessel that demands fulfillment. And on behalf of creation, it's most important. But what does it say about me that I am this deficiency? In our world, it's a projection stemming from the spiritual world. That's how it is. But in the spiritual world, the neck of the deficiency, it's all in order to advance towards the goal of creation, to ascend from below up. The deficiency which I develop in myself is the most important thing. My deficiency, my neck of, it's the same as nikve enaim, the sockets of the eyes, nikve oznaim, the sockets of the ear. Were it not for the holes, for these deficiencies in our senses, we couldn't feel anything. Were there no question, which is also like a void in your head picking your brain, that's how people put it. What does that mean? That without deficiencies, I can't reach any attainment. Meaning the power of the woman, symbolically speaking, this category, called the deficiency, the woman, the nick of the void. It's something without which I can't advance at all. Thus, the power of the woman in each and every one is the most important force. The male power here is only in order to connect with the light and to bring the correction, but the correction for the woman, meaning that the woman brings the deficiency, the woman within me raises the deficiency, and the male part in me raises that deficiency and connects her to godliness. 
and then both of them complete each other that way and get a vessel full of light. But if I look at the wisdom of Kabbalah, what you described right now is very positive and the role of the woman... It's not positive, but reciprocal. Reciprocal. Okay, but if I look at terms in the wisdom of Kabbalah, for example, the left line, deficiency, the desire to receive, or light, desire to give, the right line, I see the positive versus the negative. It's because we're not looking at it as if we're going to correct something, but the way it seems before the correction. But today, no man, and altogether until he achieves spirituality, isn't in the right line. In our world, even though there is a certain projection, copy from spirituality, but it's a corrupted projection, and thus... We can't say that only in spirituality a woman achieves equality with a man and in corporate reality. You know, we see in the last 100 years a huge development of well, women. They're not equal, but you know the fable of Balasam about the cough, where when he is born he has all the organs and everything, that a, a man, a human is different, so maybe a woman is different than a man. Maybe she develops later, but her spiritual development is a lot more developed. No. Maybe in a hundred years we'll see a character... You're talking about the physiological development of this world? No, not physiological. Psychologically, socially? Social. In our world? In our world. No, I hope that in our world soon we'll begin the correction, the spiritual correction, and that by doing so, men and women, after a preparation, will really feel themselves completing each other, wondrously reaching harmony, and one is not preferable to the other. And that's what we study in the wisdom of Kabbalah. That the moment I come to adhesion with the Creator, then I must have both the male and the female parts. You simply can't have one without the other. The coupling of Zon in order to connect with the Bina, with the Creator. Okay, and if I go back in time a little bit in history, I see and in Torah as well, I see a lot of negative connotations to women, like uh, witches. Yes. They have magic powers. Women are worse in their form of corruption than men. Wow, you're saying something that's harsh. No, no, no. Wait a second. Suppose if we're talking about the shells, klipot. So there is the male shell, which is much softer, much weaker than the female klipa shell. What is the shell? The klipa, it's the evil force, the will to receive for itself. So we are the negative force. No, not you. We're talking about the forces of nature. That from the very beginning of nature down to its very end, there is a partition into men and women. And the female part when corrupted, is much worse than the male part. So why do you study? Why do men have to study and not women, if we are more corrupted? Because women, they come later to the wisdom of Kabbalah, because, first of all, the male force has to undergo its corrections. It has to bring itself to a form where it will be a mediator between this world and the spiritual world. And only then the female force in this world awakens, rises, and brings itself to demand. And then the men could provide the female part with the corrections. The same as a man leaves home to work, to get livelihood, it's his duty. And a woman, she can stay at home, she has plenty of work at home. It's more suitable for her, for her physiology, for her psychology. And the man he performs this role because as if the woman obliges him to. She demands to have livelihood for her, for the children. Does a man feel threatened by a woman? A man is constantly threatened by a woman because a man wants to show himself as a man, like a macho, the one that brings bread, 
that sustains everything as a hero, wants to be great. This is his weakness. He needs it. And the woman, she can provide him with that feeling. And while expecting that from her, he goes to work, to achieve, to attain, to discover the world. All the things that men do eventually, they do it in order to look great, to look like heroes, wise, bright in the eyes of women. Maybe the same as a child in the eyes of his mother. He doesn't really understand that, maybe. And also men want for women to look at them that way. They might not understand it, but that's how it is. Would you be able to accept a teacher who was a female? As a teacher of what? A spiritual teacher. In spirituality? Yes. If we look at examples in the Torah, we see such examples at Deborah the prophet. Yes, they were... So you would be able to study with a woman? Probably so. Were I to see such women as Deborah, Hulda, Miriam, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, these are women that were in adhesion, in contact with the Creator. So, of course, I'll listen to such a soul that's in adhesion with the Creator when it gives me some advice, when it teaches me something. A mother teaches her small child different things. All of our education goes through women. Teachers at school, they're women. And even boys. The truth is that it's a problem in our world. They're all brought up by women. Why is it a problem? You're saying that it's good. Mm, yes or no. To a certain extent? Up to a certain limit, because a boy has to take examples from a man, and thus our kids, especially growing up in our times, where there are no long schools, separate schools for boys and girls, and there's no longer any real separation between them. Why should there be separation? We'll talk about that later. But what I want to say is that kids were brought up by women and thus where there is such a great woman, of course I'd listen to what she says. Yes. It's like a child listening to his mother. And if it was, I don't know, a female rabash? Yes, of course. You see this in the future? Wait a second. In the times of the prophet Deborah, the prophet Deborah, meaning that all the rest of the men came to her to listen to what she says, and they realized from A to Z all that she said. She was greater and than all the teachers, all the sages, everyone. Yes. So they listened, so I won't listen. And it was a generation fulfilled with Kabbalists. And you think that in the future it's possible? I don't know, but possibly so. It seems to me that in the future, now we're undergoing this intermediate phase, a transitional phase. Our generation is kind of in between. It's the very first time that we unfold the wisdom of Kabbalah at the method for correcting the world, for correcting our souls, and maybe another generation or two until it stabilizes. We're the first. And thus we pave the way for others. So we still can't exactly find the right connection between the male and female parts. But it will stabilize, it will become clearer to men and women. We're bothered by other things. How to introduce this media, the wisdom of Kabbalah to the world, and not exactly how to organize it technically for realization, because there is no one on whom to realize it yet. There are groups all over the world, and although there are two million students and all, but they're dispersed, and it's men and women, one way or another, there is still not this movement, this flow that's organized such. The time has not yet come. Only now we're thinking about opening schools for children and how to organize communities for it to set an example for the rest of the world of how is the world supposed to connect between all its parts. Thus, it's all still in its very beginning. But for the future, I think that nonetheless, we can take an example from spirituality. We don't have to search for it in our world or invent something. But we'll research, investigate spirituality more and more, men and women, and it will become clear to us 
that we have to organize the families, our social life, kids' education, and all of these things in a certain manner, as close as possible to spirituality. We have the example for it, only we did not unfold it yet, and thus we can't realize it. So can you see a female who is a spiritual teacher in the future? In the future, I'm telling you, it won't bother me. I'll be happy to accept any person who is in contact with the Creator and really speaks from there. Why is there a separation between men and women in the study of Kabbalah? Because they also have different souls. The wisdom of Kabbalah is a means to correct the soul. It doesn't come simply in vain to teach us something or how many angels are there in the sky or make some hocus-pocus or whatever. It comes to correct the soul. As it says, I've created the evil inclination. I've created the Kabbalah as a remedy. The desires in men and women are different. And also, the evil inclination is different. Evil meaning egoistic, which is against connecting with others. That's called the evil inclination. It's not my desire to eat or make money or be great, known or something. And you're saying that it's stronger in the women. Women reject each other more than men. Men, they're ready to connect amongst them. Women can't connect. And thus, first of all, the men have to correct to help them connect because a man has a certain tendency towards that, to be with the friends, hug, eat something, have a good time. And the woman, she's kind of more hiding behind the man with respect to this. She can't really connect with another woman. Maybe she has a friend she feels comfortable with. But nonetheless, a woman has her personal life. A woman is home. A woman likes to be closed amongst four walls. Whatever we do, that's how it is. It's nature. Because a woman is a vessel, and the man is the light that connects her with the rest of the vessels. And thus, we can say that all the souls will connect through the men, but the soul itself, its foundation, is the woman. Wait, what does it mean? In its foundation, because the soul is the true, great, vast, egoistic desire, desire that can't connect with others, that's a woman's desire and a man it's more of the connecting force between the souls and how can that same Deborah how did she attain what she attained if not through connection she couldn't unite with other women how did she attain what she attained we can't understand how it worked in those times because all the people of Israel starting with Abraham our patriarch even in Egypt they felt that they're in exile that to a certain extent they're disconnected from spirituality then they rose to the degree of the first temple the levels of Mohin de Neshama Mohin de Chaya afterwards even during the Babylonian exile they were still in contact with the creator later in Israel until the destruction of the temple starting with Abraham until the destruction of the temple they were in some kind of attainment their corrections were different the whole time they were beyond the spiritual barrier and today I don't have an a chance to attain you can attain anything but we're starting from a state where first of all men are engaged in it because they're the light part the connecting part the part that can connect amongst them and the entire wisdom of Kabbalah and godliness is revealed in the connection between us thus first of all men can connect between them it's easier behind them standing the women giving the men more and more powers negative powers negative that doesn't matter we're working on that negative force together and then we connect all these powers together into one force a woman is a great negative potential the man too is negative in the meantime he also has to correct himself and then the women connect with him from below and then everyone together they're like during the state of Mount Sinai it's insulting it's not insulting at all 
On the contrary. I think that this is where all these desires of women to prove themselves and to be like men come from. Yeah, but it's as a result of the lack of the correct understanding of life, the lack of understanding of the role and correction, its correct form. Because we feel very passive. It's passive to be. Mm, true. You're much more passive than men. And it's problematic. And it all stems from the soul. I'm sure that if we unfold this whole situation, this spiritual situation, we'll see how it's all interconnected in a single harmony, like in a single body, all of its parts, then no one will feel... But for the time being, I'm looking at the convention, the upcoming Kabbalah convention, and... Of course, we'll study the Zohar there. I think that at m the way I look at it, a woman shouldn't be there at all because it's a place. Incorrect. We're very interested for women to be there. We're very happy about it. Because without a woman also advancing towards the revelation of godliness, we can't succeed. What? Our force? Ask your mother. During the times of the Arbash, my teacher, when he started writing his articles, then he immediately asked for the women to also gather once a week. Yes, I remember. You remember it? Yes. Okay. For them to get together once a week. To read the articles. And read his articles, yes. And afterwards he used to ask, how was the reading, are there any questions? So essentially, the fact that we're at this convention, we're giving you some sort of strength? Of course. It's not that you're only strengthening us, but we're correcting our souls together. We don't yet see how it's all built and the connections between us, but it's on an equal level. You can't only correct men in our times. The world is round. Three million people come to the state of Mount Sinai. Only 600,000 are men, all the rest, besides those 600,000. That's why there are a lot of women in the population? Yeah, 2.4 million. It's women and children and the elderly thanks to righteous women they came out of Egypt thanks to righteous women they got the Torah the Kabbalah the sages don't simply say that you know it well I have to teach you and why is it that during cultural programs women don't participate? Uh, here there are limitations because it's forbidden for a man to enjoy a woman because it's as if the power deficiency and until you correct it and when you do correct it it's also included in the male force. It also starts bestowing. It gets a male characteristic. And thus, nonetheless, a woman, she is canceled within the man. And, well, it's not that she's dissolved there, but she participates with him in the bestowal. But she participates by bringing her deficiencies. Again, she pushes the man to go out and acquire spirituality. That's her correct role, but by that she achieves everything. She has a home as a result, a vessel. She begets the next generation. It's impossible to exist without women. Without them, men can't exist at all. But just like you said, the corruption today, why can't I do it on my own? Men can't be on their own either. Again, the whole problem. But the act in the end is not done by the women. No. When we reach spirituality and revelation, we discover how all these things are organized and arranged nicely. Each one has a great role, and then no one has any claims. When I think about these cultural events, I think about women such as Aretha Franklin and Ella Fitzgerald, and I think that their talent will go to waste. Her talent is to give a strong deficiency to the men, for them to really want spirituality. But in this world. In this world, a woman with her desires and thoughts, the very same way women give men a deficiency to sustain the world, to bring the general livelihood 
the very same way they have to give us the deficiency to bring the spiritual livelihood. That is the role of the women, and that's all you need. You can't do without, and that's all you need. When we look at religious societies where their goal is spiritual, we know that they are more chauvinistic than secular societies without spiritual goals. How can... And the woman there is satisfied. You know that society very well. How can we explain this, this phenomenon to a woman who sees... As if suppressing. Yes. Where it looks but it's as not suppression. suppression. They don't feel it that way. But how can I explain it? You can't explain. You can't. But we see in all those cultures a woman that feels herself as if lower than the man suddenly feels that along with it this feeling this status satisfies her, provides her with many such things that she can't get in any other method. Where precisely by understanding that this is my part and only that, but in this part she demands and the man has to give her whatever she needs. Whereas in our world, when she wants to break free, the man doesn't feel himself obliged at all. And, as we see, then comes divorce and destruction and much greater problems than in those societies that have this strict framework. Okay. Thank you very much. The solution is spirituality. Yes, it's obvious, but the question is how to explain it. Let's hope that we'll succeed in passing it on. This is the very first generation. Yes, because women have the power. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.